Returning to the office after a long period of working from home can be daunting. So how can you set up your office space for a successful transition? Feng Shui may be the answer. Ashley Cantley is a certified Feng Shui expert and author of High Vibe Feng Shui, 11 Steps to Achieve Your Best Life. And she joins us this morning with more to, to give us some great tips. Good morning, Ashley. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so excited to talk to you about this, but let's just start with the basics right here, especially for people who don't know. Explain exactly what feng shui is. Okay, so very simply, feng shui is um, a way to change your energy to change your emotions. And what I mean about energy is like very simply, how do you feel when you're sitting in a dirty house and maybe a cockroach runs by you or it's dark and cold? You feel not so good, right? So with feng shui, you could change the space around you to um, make you feel good. And when you feel good, then you behave a certain way. People respond to you a certain way, and then you can achieve the things that you want to achieve. It really makes sense. So let's translate this into the workspace, especially for people who are returning to the office after a long time. I mean, a lot of office spaces are really cold. You've got um, the, the fluorescent lighting, the standard office furniture. Where can we start to really change the energy in an office space? <clears throat> okay, so for example, if you are someone who's kind of dreading going back to work, you've been at home, you can, first of all, you want to place the desk so you can see who's coming and going in your office space. That is called the power position, um, which makes sense. You don't want people sneaking up on you, startling you. You want to position your desk so you can see who's coming in. And then if you're somebody who's feeling anxious or kind of sad, you want to bring in elements that um, calm you uh, and that inspire you. You can bring in a diffuser and um, do a little frankincense if you're uh, feeling anxious. You could bring in a Himalayan sea salt if you have any maybe toxic co-workers i'm sure none of you guys have toxic <laughs> no, co-workers but himalayan sea salt soaks up the negative energy and then anytime you can bring your own lighting in it's a good idea because the um overhead lighting usually sucks the energy out of you mm -hmm. and then i love using mantras like um you can see right there it says you are the best it's not just creating an experience for you it's about giving people an experience when they walk into your office so how do you want them to feel because the way they feel is determines how they react to you yeah it's kind of contagious okay so you talked about some of the things yeah. that we can bring in and I, I think a lot of people i know i'm guilty of this think the more you make it like home the better but that's not necessarily <laughs> true there's some things you want to avoid bringing in correct Okay, in my opinion, I would not set up shop like it's my bedroom and bring pictures of my family and like give the impression that I'm here to stay and camping out from nine to nine at night. I think your office is a good opportunity to set boundaries between work life, office life. So have some things in your office that make you feel good, like plants and that bring up your energy, but don't give the impression that you are there to stay. That is great advice. Ashley, thank you so much for walking us through this. We certainly appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. And you can get Ashley's book, High Vibe Feng Shui, 11 Steps to Achieving Your Best Life, now.